of the two. Most of those that are that that are different, the second draft is higher. And I credit that to the fuller knowledge I have of the individual. Um, and if there's ever any grade on the list that is more than one click different, I start over. So it's a it's a bias. That's a real excellent question. Um, so I do it once without the grade, without the names, once with the names. I take the higher of the two. I hope I answered that. So we have a couple of questions here that I think can be answered a little bit briefly. Um, one is, what is meant by more than human? Um, more than human is um, our animal, plant, land, skies, waterways uh, as our relatives. It's recognizing that uh, in this world, we are the young, humans are the younger brothers and sisters, uh, and that for millennia, our more than human relatives have been performing patterns and performing forms of logic and other things that we would consider mathematical, um, and have actually been our teachers. And we, we, we do a disservice when we go and take students out into nature and say, oh, see, look, here's a Fibonacci sequence, or here's a whatever, and we stop there because that's not really asking, that's not really showing respect to our more than human relatives and asking what else can you teach me? It's basically saying, I already know what I know, I just need you to be a prop. I just need you to, I just need to show your, your image so I can tell students this is what it is and now we're gonna go back to doing everything that we did before. So that's one way of thinking about more than human relatives is kind of recognizing our place in the world as humans. Um, on one of the slides, you wrote how the current system erases brilliance. What do you mean? Does anybody on the panel want to pick that? The question is, on one of the slides, you wrote how the current system erases brilliance. What do you mean? I can follow up. Cool, cool. Well, I, go, I go back to the example I gave that many of you have experienced is that um, that of having a conversation with a student who demonstrates brilliance that has been erased by the assessment experience. Yeah, and one way that I think about it is even if I am trying to create a, a diagnostic, so it's not even a, a summative thing, it's a formative assessment for my students, the questions that I'm asking could have bias in, them, in themselves or even in the format of the question that may not be create in space for multiple representations um, of, of what the answers are, what I'm looking for, or entry points. So the student has it up here, they do have a way of representing it, but I'm not I'm not fishing for that. I'm fishing for a specific thing that will show up um, on a later assessment. So even that is like limited in the space that, I'm, that I should be opening up for that creative representation of what they're understanding is. Oh, and got gotcha. you. Um, I also want you to think about like what ways of knowing are, are, are advantaged or reflected in your curriculum or what you value as mathematical knowledge, right? And what ways are either devalued or pushed to the side? Who gets credit? What are the mathematicians' names that are used to give credit for work? And whether they are the actual um, entities that actually created that knowledge or was it stolen or curated from other places, right? And where does that enter the conversation with students? How are we honoring that other communities, other civilizations uh, curated the same knowledge independent of Eurocentric knowledge? And where does that enter the conversation? And so who is actually reflected as mathematicians and who is not? So that is erasure of brilliance and it does impact the youth that we teach. Yeah, and I think I would I would add to that that the other aspects of, of brilliance that get erased is um, when we are taught that the only thing that you need to do mathematics is your brain. So you're already you're already disengaging all other parts of yourself. And so the brilliance of your body, 
the brilliance of your connections to to other places to lands and waterways that are already informing you on a regular basis the kind of felt knowings that you carry within you you just have these gut feelings you don't even know how to explain them those are also all forms of brilliance that we carry that we don't always acknowledge yeah and i, I just want to add um um, I think maybe echoing off of Octavia, um, and, and I'm not saying any of my wonderful colleagues are doing this, but I think it's an easy pitfall to, to, to well, whatever, uh, easy trap. When thinking about this is uh, the consequence. Um, like, I don't want you to care about this because, like, the world is, like, a smidgen less productive, right? Like, like uh, the erasure of brilliance, and, and Octavia, you said it, right? It's like, who, like, you're, like, destroy, you're, like, you're, like, the person, the, the human consequence of that is is this person, right? Like, I, it's 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 not about uh, optimizing something, you know. Um, and also, I just want to reemphasize that graduate student. I really want to talk to you. I, I, I feel really bad for my bad answer earlier. Anyway. <laughs> Um, I think maybe the last question that we have time for is um, how do we prepare students for both the world we dream about and the one we live in now? In particular, is there a way to help them learn how to assimilate slash code switch slash play the game when it can help them in the world we live in now while still progressing to the world we dream about? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll try to keep it short so everyone else can chime in because there's a lot I can say about this one. Um, it, well, first, I would what I would want us to think about is I want us to cha I want to challenge the, the the binary that it has to be one or the other, right? It could be both because when we think about even the percentage of our brain capacity that we are even using, we're not using all of it. So there's a lot of space for us to still push the truth. Like if we lead with truth and that honesty and those discussions and how we build those relationships as, as either like student to student or as professors or teachers to our students, we could provide that true information and we don't have to be the gatekeepers of, that, of those action steps. But how do we develop those steps as a community, how do we want to address that? So even having that question, that's something I would present directly to my students. Mm. Like, what does it mean even for like them to see me in the classroom? And and how am I? Am I? Do you feel I'm even bringing my full authentic self? So I, I I'm a pause there. That's so much I can say, but I'm a pause there. If anyone wants to add? Um. Yeah, I appreciate this idea that like our realities and our dreams are not two different spaces. And um, I think for for me, it's like holding on to the vision of what we want and um, realizing that we don't go at, at it alone. Um, this work has been about being in community and solidarity. And um, for me as a white woman, listening really, really deeply, making sure that I'm not positioning other people to do the work of teaching me about what I need to do to enact that vision and to dismantle systems that are harming children. Um, so that that's part of the journey too, I think. I think it also means that we need to provide spaces to radically dream. We need to normalize those spaces and then we also need to recognize that there's much work that we will do in our lifetimes that we will never see the results of. And then from an indigenous perspective, that notion that we honor our relatives and that our entire lives are about how do we become a good ancestor means that we're always thinking about our everyday actions are affecting the next seven generations. And so I just encourage you that even when you feel like things are futile, like there's no way that what I'm doing right now is gonna even make a dent, to just know, but will you be a good ancestor? Are you helping pave the path towards futures that we want, that you want for your children, for your grandchildren, for their grandchildren? And it's it can feel daunting, but at the same time, we can't think of waiting for these things to happen. We have to start living those futures now. Yeah, wow, that was that was really great. And, and I wanna really echo um, Francis as well around this point of like, can I see the, the question again? I, I wanna make sure I'm not misrepresenting it, but first I very much agree that there's like, there's a, there's a tension here, right? Um, ra rather than a duality, right? Like, yeah, yeah, um, and, and I think like, I would like to challenge, I think, the, uh, 
it's tough because it's about like this question is about individuals. It's in particular, is there a way to help them learn? Right? It's about like individual people. Um, and I think the the tough part of this is is the next bit, which is like play, when it can help them in the world we live in. Right? This is this first part, and then while still progressing to the world we dream about. And that part we can't do alone. Right? Like we can't do that part by ourselves. And and I think um, creating that space, as you say, Rochelle, right, um, for this like collective reimagining for, for like the, the reshaping of worlds is, is uh, that's part of the job. And that's, that's, uh, that's, that's what gets me out of bed. I don't know. And we thank peace. In the question, I just want to challenge the them and I want you to think of the them as us. So how are we helping us? Freedom dream, reach our desires that we want seven generations into the future. Thank you. There is no ground. And one of the ways we do this is by having opportunities to gather, like we are here at PCMI, to be able to engage with those of you that are mathematicians or doing other kinds of research, to have opportunities to be in dialogue, to have time to be supported, to take our radical dreaming and think about what does that look like within school systems that we're working within and against and outside of. So we thank also um, PCMI for the opportunity to be in this space to gather and to radically dream together. Wait, before you leave, we want to acknowledge that everyone had amazing questions and we weren't able to get to all of them. There's a link, though. Um, Michelle's going to open up her laptop oh, and you're going to yeah. see Give a QR code. Link, <laughs> you're going to see a QR code on there. And it's just a link to a survey to, for us to kind of know a little bit more. And we hope that this will be the beginning of a lot of conversations going to happen while we're here and after we leave. Thank you. Hang on, I got to plug it in. <laughs> but we gotta wait till we get you don't want to see the desktop what are you saying about my desktop it's beautiful <laughs> <laughs> they don't deserve it okay alright there we go boom so if you zoom in take you to a nice google form we'd love to hear feedback comments all that good stuff